Yes, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am very pleased to meet via online uh, many of the breast cancer patients. I am He Jung Kim at Department of Breast Surgery at Asam Medical Center. I'd like to talk about the fertility preservation for breast cancer survivors today. This is a table of content of my presentation. Between 2000 and 2018, the number of breast cancer patients in Korea increased rapidly more than fourfold. Compared to the Western countries, you can see that the breast cancer patients in Asia, including Korea, are getting younger. According to the registry project data of the Korean Breast Cancer Society, 35% are women Women of childbearing age between 18 and 45 among all registry patients. Breast cancer survivors want to get counseling about the problems that can occur due to treatment. They want to prevent them, and they also want counseling and are concerned about the treatment process. They also want counseling regarding the breast cancer treatment-related complications and about how they can manage and prevent any deterioration in their quality of life due to the treatment-related complications. Now, there are many people who think that the prognosis is poorer for young breast cancer patients compared to other age groups, and this has been reported since a long time ago. Now, a young, pa young patients have not reached the age of the health medical, health medical screening, and so they progress and then detect the breast cancer, or there are reports that young breast cancers are more aggressive and therefore um, the reason why the young patients have poorer prognosis compared to other age group is not in everyone but it's in a hormone po receptor positive breast cancer now when there is chemotherapy induced amenorrhea better survival outcome is reported therefore in 2003 in Europe and in 2009 in Korea uh, there have been studies that uh, have been started Started regarding patients whose ovarian function is restored post chemotherapy and ovarian function suppression injections were given to effective induced amenorrhea, and the data started to be published since 2015. The soft study from Europe published its 12 year follow up observation data recently. The UK Astra study also published its eight year study data, and in the reduc recurrence reduction was statistically significant in ovarian suppression group with relative risk recurrence risk reduction between 24 and 33 percent. Therefore, there are more ongoing studies for inducing amenorrhea and maintaining that ovarian suppression effectively in young patients. And we anticipate that improvement uh, will be made in treating younger patients. However, because of the cancer treatments, young breast cancer patients uh, face challenges such as ovarian function failure, infertility, premature menopause, and we need to review these problems. Now, young women diagnosed with breast cancer have a low fertility rate, less than 70% lower than that of um, non-breast cancer women, and that is very low compared to other cancer patients. Now, breast cancer is the most common cancer in women of reproductive age, and therefore, uncle fertility preservation counseling is very important before starting breast cancer treatment. What is fortunate is that we have fertility preservation uh, procedures as well as uh, continued reports of studies on the safety of pregnancy post breast cancer treatment. And therefore, I think there isn't too much concern about the, such pre procedures and uh, pregnancy after treatment. In the the U American and the European guidelines since 2012, they have been recommending the preservation of healthy embryos or healthy oocyte in cancer patients. And starting from 2018, the so guidelines are recommending the ovarian protection injections as well in order to prevent the gonadotoxicity when getting chemotherapy. This information should be provided to all premenopausal patients and the patient's preference, disease stage, and biology 
technology must also be considered in order to provide detailed counseling regarding uh, the possibility of successful pregnancy and the methods for successful pregnancy and the timing and the period. Let us take a look at what factors should be considered. Uh, this shows the study on the pattern of ovarian function restoration post chemotherapy. This looks at the result of the ovarian function test. And if you look at the details about how the ovarian function is restored, you can find as the data as follows. At the bottom most graph, it's the black curve shows the five-year follow-up of 45-year-old women. And in 33% of these women, the ovarian function will be restored. And at the top, we have the pink a curve, and that shows women younger than 35 years of age will have uh, ovarian restoration in 91 percent of them over five years. So it shows how important of a factor age is in ovarian function restoration. The graph on the right hand side shows the probability of 44 year old women with ovarian function restoration. If that is, if the odds of restoration is one for these women, it shows that the the likelihood for 36-year-old women uh, will be six times higher. So it shows that age really, in fact, is an important factor in ovarian function restoration. Now, if you look at breast cancer treatment, this disease is important, and these days the subtype is important as well. Breast cancer is rare in men. It's very common in women. And as you can see, it is related to estrogen. Now, you get tested for your estrogen receptor, and there are patients who are are estrogen receptor positive and negative. And also, there is a marker called HER2, which shows the aggressiveness of the breast cancer. And there are overexpression of HER2 and those who don't have overexpression. So there are basically four different subtypes, which will determine what kind of treatment the patient will get. Now, pa breast cancer patients with hormone receptor positive, they will basically get anti-hormonal therapy. And those with HER2 overexpression will receive targeted therapy. Now, there are studies for combination of targeted therapy with chemotherapy. Now, there are two types of hormonal therapy. If their patient is negative for both estrogen and progesterone receptors and they are HER2 negative, they are called uh, triple negative because they test negative for all three biomarkers. And chemotherapy is the most important treatment for triple negative breast cancers and also in a higher risk risk patients, chemotherapy is added to their treatment regimen. So there are these types of treatment and not just the modality, but you have to consider the duration of treatment as well. Chemotherapy lasts for about three to six months. Targeted therapy lasts for one year or more recently up to two years. In the case of anti-hormonal therapy, it lasts at least five years to 10 years, up to 10 years. And radiation therapy is provided about one month plus or minus, and sometimes the duration of treatment may last as short as three months up to 10 years in total, considering all of these treatment modalities. For example, if you're 24, if you receive just chemo, you'll be 25 years old. And if you get hormonal therapy, you will be in your early 30s after five years. So you have to consider the age of the patient at the end of treatment, and that will be helpful in making plans for fertility preservation. Therefore, we have to consider uh, the treatment modality as well as the duration of treatment when we plan for fertility preservation. If the patient is in her late 30s or past her 40, we have to think more seriously about the fertility met preservation methods. Now, let's take a look at the different methods for fertility preservation. First, let's take a look at how uh, cancer treatment can impact fertility. Uh, for example, chemotherapy directly damages uh, the ovaries. It damages the ovarian cells and the vessels, and therefore the follicles are exhausted. Starting from birth, women are born with a fixed number of ovarian reserve, and unfortunately, this number does not increase. It declines steadily, and it starts to decline sharply after men are 
but if patients receive these um, ovarian toxic or gonadotoxic treatments such as chemotherapy at young age, the follicle number will re be reduced dramatically and this reduction will be accelerated further and when the follicles are all exhausted, it will lead to infertility and premature ovarian insufficiency. So in this process, age and the treatment modality are important. Women in their 40s, if they receive certain chemotherapies, they will experience amenorrhea in more than 80 percent. And women in their 30s will experience amenorrhea in about 50 percent of them. So sometimes they will start to menstruate again, but because of the reduced number of follicles, they need to be prepared because there is the risk of uh, premature ovarian insufficiency and premature menopause. Now, the most important thing in preserving fertility is to decide before treatment or is to um, cryopreserve your oocytes or ovarian tissues or your embryo before starting treatment. Second way is to use the ovarian uh, suppression injection in order to minimize the ovaries being from being attacked during chemotherapy. Now, embryo cryopreservation is similar to in vitro fertilization. You use the FSH agents to induce uh, ovulation of to induce ovulation in order to create more follicles, and then you retrieve the oocyte, and then you would preserve uh, the embryo, which has been fertilized in vitro using your partner's sperm. Now, there are many questions about how embryo preservation is different from oocyte uh, preservation. Now, embryo preservation is very old and safe, just like in vitro fertilization, and oocyte uh, cryopreservation is sometimes called vitrification, as you can see in this photo. And if you make ice in general, you will get these kind of transparent ice crystals, and there will be these very sharp and pricky crystals that can damage the cells. But recently, uh, the vitrification does not form crystals, and therefore, the cryopreservation of oocyte has been improved recently. And also, you can ask the intention of the patient every five years after they cryopreserve their uh, oocytes or their embryos to see if they want to extend the preservation. And longer pres preservation does not have a significant impact. Now, patients are concerned about delayed treatment. Now, they ask if they have to start treatment uh, based on the beginning of the menstruation. But let me give you a case, example by a case. This patient had ovarian stimulation on day 12 of her menstruation cycle that is similar to the ovulation time point, and so it shows that it's not really related to the menstruation cycle. So the oocyte was retrieved on day 12 after ovarian stimulation, and on average, oocytes are retrieved 12 to 13 days after stimulation and does not cause much delay in treatment. And in the process, uh, many patients are concerned about the elevated level of the estrogen hormone, but if you use aromatase inhibitors such as letrozole, you can reduce the estrogen level to about half, and you can continue using AIs. And after oocyte retrieval, some are concerned if they can have surgery or chemo immediately. This patient had the ovarian protection injection on the same day as oocyte retrieval. And if you use such protective injections right after oocyte retrieval, you can start the chemo right away. Now, there have been studies that are being reported that there is no impact on the recurrence and the progress of breast cancer uh, from the fertility preservation procedures. Now, the uh, ovarian tissue cryopreservation is not popularly used at the moment, but this is a procedure that requires no ovulation induction, and it is possible to perform in young girls before they reach puberty uh, if there, and if there is no delay in treatment. If other surgeries are scheduled, then it can take place concurrently, and so I think in future it has a lot of potential. Now, this surgery is ovarian tissue retrieval using single 
for lap for laparoscopy, and so you can hardly see the scar. And the retrieved oocytes are stored in thin slices, and the successful transfer rate is about 90 percent. You can transfer multiple times, and they function even after transfer. And about 130 live births have been reported worldwide, so it's a very promising procedure. Now, this uh, ovarian protection injection can be was inspired by the fact that prepubertal girls are not affected by gonadotoxic agents. And so the GnRH agonist is blocked because it gives a signal to the ovary uh, to work. And so it creates temporary uh, menopause, postmenopausal like state. It suppresses the activities of the follicle, reduces the bloodstream that goes to the ovary, reduces delivery of chemo, and therefore reduces a cellular damage. And as for whether such injection has ovarian protective function, there have been many studies in breast cancer. In fact, the ovarian dysfunction uh, was much higher in patients who were injected with this ovarian suppressant, and 14 percent compared to those who did not receive the uh, um, the injection. And also the fertility rate also was 10.3 percent compared to 5.5 percent in the control group. And so premature menopause was reduced 72 percent, and there was 1.8 fold the higher number of women who were successfully uh, pregnant. And therefore, according to the guideline, premenopausal women receiving chemo are recommended to get the ovarian suppression. Uh, injection, however, it doesn't necessarily mean it can replace cryopreservation. The most effective way to preserve fertility is cryopreservation, and you should bear that in mind. After procedure of preservation, you will start your treatment. After starting treatment, a pregnancy is recommended uh, three months after completing the uh, administration of tamoxifen for the patients who received chemotherapy. And also regarding this, these decisions, you should get one-on-one -on -one counseling with your internal medicine specialist, with your radiation oncologist, or with your ob gene specialist in order to determine when uh, you should uh, time your pregnancy. Let me go over a study which is ongoing in Korea. When you ask women via questionnaire about how difficult it is to make the decisions about getting these types of procedures, for fertility um, preservation. They have responded that it is quite difficult, and other study results show that when receiving such oncofertility counseling, about 40 percent of these patients uh, chose to get their ovarian protection injection or to have cryopreservation procedure. But 44 percent responded they will not accept delayed treatment because of such procedures, and about 33 percent said one or two week delay in treatment was acceptable. So they were mostly concerned about delay in treatment. And in actual clinical practice, as a surgeon or as a physician treating breast cancer patients, they don't have enough time in their outpatient clinic to explain the treatment of breast cancer, and they don't have enough assistant resources to help with such oncofertility counseling. From the patient's point of view, they're very scared about breast cancer, and some have never even heard of the word fertility, and there are patients who haven't even thought about future pregnancy at all. So it's not very easy to make the decision. And while the treatment or the tests are ongoing, they are hesitating, and then they end up giving up making the decision. Therefore, in order for the patients to make fully informed decisions after sufficient thinking, we realized the importance of having a standardized oncofertility counseling program. So we made such program, and we compared patients before this program was established and those who received counseling after this program was established to see the satisfaction level of the patient and the spouse, as well as the pregnancy rate and the, dis and the selection of fertility preservation procedure. When the patient comes to the OPD, they first uh, get counseling from their uh, oncologist that their fertility can be compromised due to treatment. If they want, they can receive oncofertility counseling from the fertility specialist, and they can hear about the options that they have available, and the patient may make the choice to preserve or not to preserve, and there will be uh, questionnaires 
being asked at, regarding the factors that affect the decision making of the patient or the conflict that are related. And for effective program, we have the programs made together with the oncology, with the fertility preservation specialist, with the psychiatrist department, and the patient advisory group, and the medical communication center. And what is important is to have counseling program to help with the patients regarding leaflets or videos to inform the patients and also come up with a policy for reimbursing the procedures for fertility preservation, which are not reimbursed yet. So these kind of brochures can inform the patient. They can even take the brochures home to read. And the fertility preservation specialists can provide educational lectures. They can also provide decision aids. And also, we have built a web page where there can be shared decision making based on information uh, between the patient and the specialist. And so, there are a lot of challenges in effective counseling. However, such a shared decision making process is the ultimate goal of the study that we are performing in order to make help the patient make a decision that they will not regret about. And the most important is the active engagement of the patients in such study. And we have to uh, inform the patient using a language that the patient can understand. And uh, we would like to invite uh, the patients to actively participate in the study as part of the patient account advisory group. Now, in the future, we might use virtual reality environment to overcome the limitations in time and space for more proactive counseling and enhance the communication between doctor and physician and patient and patient. We are planning for such VR studies. Now, so far, I talked about counseling for fertility preservation before treatment. Now, we also have in plan more integrated studies that covers all of the decisions for pregnancy during treatment, about getting pregnant, giving birth, and about child care. Now, young women diagnosed with breast cancer are being enrolled for studies which have been activated in the US and Europe. Uh, young breast cancer patients are engaged in such studies as part of the patient advisory group. And we are seeing the start of such studies uh, take off in Asia. If a woman, 34-year-old woman, is diagnosed with stage 2A triple negative breast cancer and receives partial mastectomy after uh, post-surgical systemic therapy, we will consider age and the history of chemotherapy and to determine any compromise in fertility. If the patient is the same condition and is HER2 positive, she will receive targeted therapy. And if the patient is a are positive, then she will receive pre-surgical systemic agent and then surgery, and then on top of that, anti-hormonal therapy, and that means five extra years of treatment. Let's look at uh, earlier stage, early stage patients. It's 0 0.5 centimeter breast cancer, stage 1, HR positive, HER2 negative. And this patient will receive surgery and anti-hormonal treatment. And in such case, even if the patient does not get chemo, we have to take into consideration the five-year anti-hormonal therapy duration in order to provide counseling and make choices regarding fertility preservation. Stage zero breast cancer will receive surgery and hormonal therapy. It's very early stage. So it will be easier to decide to stop the treatment. But still, nonetheless, you will have to think about fertility preservation. If the first case is 24-year-old after surgery, she's still young enough to not go for fertility preservation. But these days, young women uh, decide to have their oocytes retrieved in order to prepare for future pregnancy, even without getting such anti-cancer treatment. So there will be the, the need to think more seriously about these issues. There will be a need for more serious thinking if the patient is 42-year-old. This patient decided to cryopreserve her oocytes, and there was about two-week delay in her treatment, and she started her pre-surgical 
uh, systemic treatment. This was in 2016. Now, if this patient came more recently, uh, we would have sent her to the Onco Fertility Counseling Program uh, when she first came to the hospital via the study that we are conducting. And if the patient made the decision to preserve her fertility, that procedure will take place while she's going through the series of tests, and there won't be long delay in treatment. Now, the fifth case was stage zero, and this patient thought really long and hard about cryopreservation of the fertility, and she received surgery. So she had a little bit of delay in her tamoxifen treatment post-surgery and had her cryopreservation procedure. Now, this is a young breast cancer patient who is positive for hormone receptor, and anti-hormonal therapy for such patient is getting longer. And therefore, the issue of ovarian dysfunction is inevitable. But there are active ways to preserve uh, the fertility, such as embryo or oocyte cryopreservation in the future, the ovarian tissue uh, preservation as well. And during chemotherapy period, the ovarian protection injection can be used to minimize damage on the ovaries. Such counseling will take place concurrently together with the breast cancer treatment. And so faster decision is better because it will minimize delay to the treatment. Thank you very much for your attention.